Hi, I see that some people are joining us. Thank you so much. Um, if you could just give us a couple of minutes, um, I believe that we might be having some technical difficulties. Um, so we will be back in less than 60 seconds. Hey everybody, <laughs> we'll be kicking off in a second here. Sorry about the delay. Um, and now Mitch doing? is solo. Um, we've got some some identity confusion with Goldcast, <laughs> but we know who we are and we're confident and strong about it. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, solo is going to join us here in a second. So hi everyone, I'm Lizzie Schaefer. I'm the general manager of Blackboard Social Good Startup Program, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to today's session, adding DAF pay to illuminate online donation forms and proper database entry for DAF gifts. Joining me today are Solomon Serfati, the CEO, and Mitch Stein in the striped shirt. Mitch is in the stripes, um, the head of strategy <laughs> at Chariot. Chariot is a BlackBot ISV partner, a BB Dev Day sponsor, and a participant in the January 2024 cohort of the Social Good Startup Program. You can find their integrated app with RENXT and LO in the Blackboard Marketplace, ready to connect to your databases right now today. So run, don't walk over there. Uh, and if you're joining us in Seattle in September for BDCon, you don't want to miss the startup showcase where Chariot and all of the other companies in our current cohorts will be competing. Uh, they will be pitching their solutions in hopes of winning a BDCon 2025 sponsorship. Uh, just a friendly reminder, before we get started, I am going to launch a survey at the end of this. It'll take about 10 seconds. It's super important that everyone please give us their feedback because our top three highest rated sessions are going to get a golden ticket to BBCon. Um, so make sure and chime in and tell Mitch and Solomon how much you enjoyed their presentation at the end of this. So with that, I am going to hang out in the chat. If anyone has questions as we go, just put them there and we will get to them um, in order at the end. So with that, Solomon and Mitch, please take it away. Awesome. Well, first of all, I'd love to, while Sal is pulling up the slides here, I would love to just say to everyone that's attending in the chat, if you could let us know if you've heard of DAF Pay before um, or seen it in a form or are familiar with DAFs, we'd just love to hear if anyone can share their experience level so we can speak to that too. Um, but otherwise, we can dive right in and start talking about donor vice funds and DAF Pay. Yeah, this is great. So Chariot is built the first donor advised fund payment option that can be automatically included into donation form checkout experiences. Uh, my name is Mitch Stein. I'm the head of strategy here at Chariot and Sala will be going through all of the important technical details that you all came to hear after we do a quick initial overview of donor advised funds and the market. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about DAFs, you may have been hearing, hearing more about them, how they work, why they're so important. And then we're going to do a live walkthrough of how you can use DAF Pay on Illuminate Online Form and how the integration guide works with Chariot. Then we'll talk a little bit about data entry and what ultimately ends up in the CRM. And I'll just say before we get going too, um, that the more that you can let your BlackBot folks know that you're interested in working with DAF Pay, we want to keep improving this experience. We want it to ultimately be a native solution within uh, BlackBot forms. So right now we can do this external implementation, but the more that you're seeing that work and are excited about it, we also want to make sure it's making it into all the products that you're using. So first we'll kick off to explain at the highest level, what exactly is a donor advice fund? It's a charitable savings account with tax advantages like a 401k or an HSA. So what I mean by that is you use a 401k for retirement or an HSA for healthcare savings, where you contribute tax advantage dollars into those accounts, in that instance, pre-tax dollars. Those can be invested when they're in those accounts so they can grow with the market. So when you need that in the future, you have even more money to spend on those things. DAFs are kind of similar. You can contribute cash and even assets like securities into an account specifically designated for charitable giving, and you immediately get a tax deduction on those contributions. Once the money is in that account, it can only be used to support nonprofits. 
it cannot ever be taken back out for personal use. Um, and then you can make grants out of that growing account over time because that balance is invested in the market. So a lot of people think about this like an alternative to a private foundation, but it's super easy to use and set up. And so it's, it's really for anybody that wants to also have the benefit of a designated giving account it holds them accountable to whatever goals they have for their own philanthropy, helps them track all their giving in one place, and again, be, be optimizing their taxes. And the reason that this is coming up so much more often is because the donor advised fund market is incredibly fast growing. It's the fastest vehicle in philanthropy, and now there's a record $230 billion that's waiting to be donated today. That's the amount of assets that are sitting in donor advised funds. And there are almost 2 million individual accounts for donor advised fund, and that is growing at 30% year over year. And the reason that these are expanding so quickly, in addition to just the baseline tax benefits, is there are more and more providers like Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab that have better platforms, lower fees, lower minimums, and some providers even with a mobile app to be managing a DAF from like Daffy. So it's increasingly accessible uh, and more and more people are aware of these benefits and using them to increasingly support nonprofits. And the biggest thing from a nonprofit's perspective about this is that it's not just growing popularity for donors, they're actually using it in exponentially increasing amounts to support nonprofit organizations. So just last year, for the latest data we have, there was over $52 billion granted out of DAFs to nonprofits. So that's almost one in five dollars in philanthropy now coming from a DAF. So it is not a niche, up and coming, small segment of the market. It is a core and fast growing segment that more and more nonprofits are noticing. And also that there's a big opportunity for where this is going in the future because there's an estimated 176 billion in distributions from DAFs in just the next five years. So you might be wondering what exactly Chariot does in all this, if DAFs are growing and everything's so great, but the problem is that DAFs cannot be used online in the same way that you would use a credit card or Google Pay or PayPal. Even though you've set all this money aside specifically for charity, you actually can't use it in those moments of inspiration where uh, your cousin is running a 5K or you have a friend that's raising money on GoFundMe for their birthday, for their favorite nonprofit. You can't be a part of that moment because you'd have to go log into your DAP account, try to find the organization and submit a grant, which won't be counted in those online campaigns. And so that's exactly what Chariot came about to solve was creating a payment option that could sit right next to credit cards and Google Pay and DAF and PayPal called DAF Pay, where you can use your DAF just like you would these other forms of giving right at checkout in online donation forms like Luminate Online. And it can sit right there next to these other payment options um, and be really intuitive for donors who otherwise would have, you know, they might have seen PayPal or credit card and just made that gift because it was so much easier. We hear from donors all the time going this route where, yeah, I have a DAF and I wish I could use it more often, but I end up, it, money ends up sitting there longer than it otherwise would because every time I go to donate on a nonprofit's website or on a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, it's just so much easier to use my credit card. But now you can introduce DAF pay in that exact same setting and they wanna use that instead because it's these three super simple steps. They just select their DAF provider, they log in with their existing credentials, and then they finalize their gift on the last pane. They're reminded of their account balance, uh, which is a really strong anchor because the average account balance is over $120,000 across the whole market. Uh, and so we actually see over 30% of people end up boosting their gift size once they're reminded of the total they have just sitting there waiting to donate. And the average gift size through the platform is over $1,000. So we've streamlined it, we've improved the UX so that they're making larger gifts. And importantly, that data is coming back to the organization so they know immediately when that gift is made, for how much, by who, and how to contact them. And I, before I hand over to Salo uh, to go through the walkthrough, I just saw Elizabeth asked a question in the chat. Is Blackbaud planning on adding DAF pay as an option in Blackbaud Checkout? 
We hope so. Um, <laughs> I think Elizabeth, if, if you can pass that question along to your your reps that you work with, that always helps. Um, but that's what what we're working towards is that that can be can be native. Oh, I have okay. <laughs> well, we're glad to hear that you're excited about it. That we do have this um, solution in the interim. We're going to walk through, but ultimately, we do hope that that is possible someday soon. So, go ahead. Um, thank you, Mitch, for that walkthrough. That should give a, a, an, an overview of what donor advised funds are and the problem statement that DAF Pay is solving. We're very excited to show DAF Pay on Illuminate Online form today. So what I'll do is a live walkthrough. Uh, we click this link over here, and that'll take us to Central Park and Services website. You know, Central Park in New York City, one of the best parks in the world. Uh, this is their website, and we're going to try to donate um, to their website today. So we'll see, um, this is Illuminate Online form. I want to donate, let's say $50. Um, let's say I just put it in myself, let's put $50. I wanna put in um, my own billing information and I don't wanna repeat this. So I'll put in first name, last name, uh, address, let's say, Perfect. Put in my email. And I will see here there's a brand new payment option, DAF Pay, uh, which Mitch showed you. And so I'm going to go through an actual live donation today. This will be a real $50 donation to uh, Central Park Conservancy. And there's no way of showing a demo other than showing it live. That's the best way. Um, all right. So if a user clicks DAF Pay, you'll see the modal pops up asking a, the, the user which account, um, the, which provider they have an account with. So I personally have an account with CharityVest, which is a, a, a modern donor advice fund provider. Um, I would enter in my email and password. Here I'm authenticating my account with CharityVest. I got a two-factor code, which I just got to my phone. I'll paste that in over there. And now this is the final thing. I know I have $640 left to give in my account. I want to, I wanted to donate $50. So by clicking donate here, I would have, I am going to initiate a $50 donation from my charity invest account to central park and services. You saw how quick that was. We call it donations in less than 15 seconds. So I click donate here. That renders me to a thank you page. I've just gotten an email automatically uh, thanking me for my donation. And I've completed an online donor advice fund donation via my charity best account, just as easy or if not easier than donated with credit card or PayPal. Uh, and that's the true magic of DAF pay. Going back to the presentation. Um, the next step is, so how do we, how do we make that happen? How do we get DAF pay on Illuminate online form? As Mitch mentioned, the best way, would be if we have a native integration with Luminate Online so that any nonprofit can just turn it on, just like they turn on PayPal or credit card, and that's in the works. So if you wanna see that happen, please email your uh, your reps at BlackBot so that we can have that integration done sooner, ra sooner rather than later. For the time being, we're gonna go through this integration guide um, that we've put together. This is a thorough step-by-step uh, -step approach on how to get DAF pay on on the Luminate Online form. The basics of it is that there's two ways. There's the Cherry Developer approach or the do-it-yourself approach. The Cherry Develop, let's go through the first one, Cherry Developer. This is when someone from our team would work with you and the nonprofit on doing the end-to-end -end development experience of getting DAF pay on, on the Luminate Online form. We would get added um, to, uh, I have access to the Lumina Online portal, and here are steps on how we would do that. Um, once we have access to the Lumina Online form, you all will let us know which forms you would want us to do the DAF pay uh, button on, and then the developers from our team would go in and do all the necessary work so that the button shows up and all the data gets fed in uh, and passed through correctly. The second way, and, and here are important notes. So the data is gonna be populated as an offline donation, 
Right now, uh, Luminar Online doesn't have donor advice fund payments as, an, as a native uh, category. So we submit it as an offline donation. Another important piece is that the donation will be come as a check type and we're gonna pass in a chariot ID or a tracking ID inside that check field. And that's very important because when the provider, so in the case of the example that I walked through, when Charity Vest sends that $50 donation to Central Park, Central Park is gonna get that, that payment with a tracking ID from Chariot. And then they'll use the tracking ID that we submitted to the Luminar Online form to reconcile the payment with the data that shows up on Luminar Online. So that's the first approach. Uh, generally the easiest um, and because we've done this over and over again. The second option is to do it yourself. So I'll walk through. Um, so yeah, so let's go through. So first thing you're, you're going to have to um, get familiar with is following our API guide. So if you click here, you'll see these are Chariot's APIs. The APIs are broken down into two sections, Chariot front end and Chariot back end. The front end section gives all the steps on how to initialize the button on the front end form. You basically need to add a script tag to the top of the HTML page, and then you would render this web component wherever you want the button to show up. The only required parameter in this web component is what we call a CID, a connect identifier, and that is an identifier specific to the nonprofit. That's how the DAF pay button knows which nonprofit should be receiving the funds. To get this CID, you need to be calling our backend, and this is how that's described in the backend overview, um, so that you can generate the CID so that you, uh, you can render the front end button. And then the modal takes care of the end to end experience of submitting the grant, uh, the, the donation. I won't go into too much depth, um, into these docs. What you could do is go through a quick start guide, which takes you through the end to end experience of adding DAF pay to a form all the way from the front end to the back end side. Okay. Going back here, again, we're also happy to set up pair programming sessions with your team to help troubleshoot any part of the do-it-yourself approach. Um, I won't go into too much depth, depth here. This, it's to, for Cherry to be able to, to be submit the data to the Luminar Online API, we need to get access. And then that's the same thing. We need to get access for the offline donation API. And then this is the front end piece of actually adding the web component to the part of your form that you want the button to, the payment option to render in. Okay. Um, additional important information, you can design the button to fit the form. So here's where you can create a custom theme. This will take you back to our API docs. We have um, a bu a, several different button themes, the dark blue, white on light blue, light blue on white, and then a gradient theme. And then you can style the button to have different widths, different heights, uh, so that it matches the theme of your, of your form really natively. Okay. Going back. Um, this is the last important piece for every donation. You're going to want to know, did it come from charity vest? Did it come from fidelity? Did it come from, uh, different DAF providers? So in our API docs, you can use, um, this list grants or get grants object to get more information on the DAF that submitted, uh, the payment. Okay. Going back now to the integration guide, uh, we just walked through that. I wanna go over some best practices on how these GIFs should be coded into CRMs and Luminate Online. The first is on the top left here, the hard credit. Typically the hard credit should be given to the DAF provider. So Fidelity Charitable, Charity Vest in my example, Vanguard, et cetera, because the funds are technically coming from them. The soft credit should be given to the donor because the donor is the one who recommended the DAF grift to the DAF provider to send the funds. Donation receiving, you should not be issuing your do the donor a tax receipt after a donor advice fund gift because the unique nature of DAFs is that the donor gets the tax receipt when they deposit funds into their DAF account. So they shouldn't be getting a tax receipt when they send funds out of the account. It's very important in your CRMs to tag these donors as potential for high value donors. These are people who are very intentional about their philanthropy. They set aside funds specifically for charity that indicates that they care a lot about nonprofits. They want to connect more deeply with nonprofits. And so any sort of segmentation that you have in your CRMs 
you want to make sure for any gift initiated from that pay to set them through uh, those steps and really engage with these donors for them to give you uh, potentially a very large gift down the line. Um, so it's one, both identifying and stewarding these high donors in your CRMs. Here's where it gets interesting. Since we don't have a native integration with Luminate Online, the way we map data from uh, DAFE, where we collect information like the donor's first name, last name, email that they agree to share, um, and then send that over to Luminate Online or TeamRaiser differs. So on the left-hand side here, you can see sort of a mapping of those tables of what we recommend. Um, so on Luminate Online's API, our amount should be mapped to the other amount and Team Razors should be mapped to gift amount. So this shows that table. If you click on this guide, um, it'll take you through uh, a step-by-step -step of explaining each, each mapping step. So here's how you create sort of the component. Here's how you place it in the right place on Luminate Online specifically, what tags you want to look for. Um, passing the form data to Chariot. So if we go back to the Central Park example and we go, let's say we want to initiate a new donation. I won't go through the whole thing again. But each field here in the form has a specific tag. And so that tag has to be passed into the DAF pay option. So for example, the form app, this could be the billing name and we're saving it to a variable. This variable is passed to Chariot and then Chariot can map that variable to a Lumet Online API or a Team Razor API. And here you can see that, that table in more depth. Um, these are just additional things, step five, step six. We're happy to share these guides and full end-to-end -end walkthroughs um, after this, this session. Um, but that's the basic overview of how DAFPA gets added to Lumet Online and best practices with regards to adding it to a CRM. The next piece is a Q&A, but before I go into the Q&A, I want to mention another best practice and an upcoming change um, on Luminary Online that everyone should be aware of. So if we go to our documentation, like I said before, if we go to the overview slide and go to the bottom here, we can see a demo. This is a place where you can play around with DAFPE as much as you want. And the good thing about DAFPE is that it's an express checkout button. So that means you can actually add the DAFPE button before the user has to input any information on your form. And DAFE can collect this information automatically so that the donor doesn't have to put it in step by step. So let's look at that experience. So let's say a donor visits a form, they select DAFE, and again, they log in. Let's say they log into Charity Vest. Since we're in a, in a sandbox environment, as you can see on the top here, the username is good user. And the password is password123. This won't actually submit real donations. We'll pull down uh, account balance, donation amount, and you see how we can get the donor's information automatically so that the donor doesn't have to put it in. If the donor wanted, they can change this information and update it, but it's pre-filled by default. And now when a user clicks donate, they're done with their donation. It's, it's jumped a lot of steps, um, which has higher conversion rates and more money ending up in nonprofit hands. The alternative to having to being not uh, express, if we turn that off, is it being next to other payment options, as you saw in the example with Central Park. We recommend express, especially with Lumina Online, because they're coming out with a an update where they don't allow for JavaScript to be next to other payment options. So express very soon with Lumina Online might be a requirement, just so everyone's aware. So I'll stop sharing my screen there, and we can enter into a Q&A. All right. I'll, I'll quickly jump in here as well, just to share like a couple success stories about why this is so critical. Um, one of the organizations we work with is the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And I just wanted to double click on something Salo mentioned about stewardship and thanking your donors. So most DAF gifts today, you get in the mail as a check and you do not get an email you often don't get their name and you rarely get any useful contact information so the ability to have that email and have someone on the fundraising or major gifts team um, actually reach out and send them a personal message that's what the vp of plan giving decided to do with daft pay gifts uh, and michael j fox and so she would reach out and thank them individually each time she got those alerts about those daft pay gifts 
Um, and she uh, found that over 50% of those donors actually responded to her thank you email, which is like an unheard of rate of response for thank you emails because those donors are so not used to actually getting thanked when they make these gifts. And the average gift size was about $3,000. So these are major transactions that donors are just kind of never having the loop closed or, or hearing that, that gratitude from the organization. Um, so Candy just shared the asking about the cost here. So when it's natively integrated into a fundraising platform, there is no cost um, upfront for any nonprofit to use DAF pay. There's just a processing fee, just like you would for a credit card of 2.9%. Um, for these special implementations, there is a subscription cost um, just for us to do this work with you to, to specially implement. And uh, those start at $450 a month but that also comes with a significant amount of volume, that of uh, transaction volume with no processing fees. So you're paying for the subscription, the access, and with that, you also get uh, for that starter plan, $250,000 of DAF gifts with no processing fees uh, because you pay for that subscription. But Candy, if you have more questions on that, we can also chat offline. And then Elizabeth, just I'm super excited. Oh, we'd love to hear that. Elizabeth, if you could, I'd love to hear which organization you're with. I just want to make sure that we're getting, uh, getting you everything you need. And, and I'll, I'll share another story here about kind of other, uh, other folks that have implemented DAF pay on their own where it wasn't a core part, um, or sorry, a native checkout option. So that's just like the Central Park Conservancy example um that Salo walked through but another one uh is the pan mass challenge it's a bike ride athletic fundraiser across the state of massachusetts um it's actually the largest athletic fundraiser in the country they added daft pay to their uh, check out all of their campaign forms and it's that express option that Salo talked about at the beginning of the year and just in those four months which was actually the low season for them the, the bike ride is in august just in those four months they raised over $300,000 just in DAF pay across almost 450 gifts. The average gift size was a little over $700. So it's over three times their average credit card gift. And that was a 40% increase in their DAF gift size year over year and a 60% increase in their online DAF giving. So it is a serious component of their digital fundraising now that they can raise these DAF gifts online. And importantly, the their growth they saw year over year in total revenue, the total amount of growth, almost 60% of that is being driven by DAFs. So in an environment where you know, fundraising is somewhat stagnant amongst individuals, we're all trying to figure out how to optimize and improve this, but the overall figures have been fairly stagnant for several years. DAFs are a really exciting source of growth um, as more and more people are using them and now able to use them online. And Sal is just sharing that those case study details there from from PMC. Um, Sal, maybe if you just want to drop that URL into the chat here, and maybe we can also include the API docs and the and the Luminate guide um, links so that anyone attending can see those there. Thank you, Sal. And Elizabeth, that's great to hear. Yes, American Cancer, uh, love, love to hear that. You'll be in very good hands with the loan. So I'm glad that that's all set up. Oh, sorry, and I saw there's a, a question in the Q&A instead of the chat here from Mary, or Marianne, apologies. Can the form capture the name of the DAF in addition to the managing agency? Sal, do you want, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, let me just see. I'm trying to find the question. Can the form capture the name of the DAF in addition to the managing agency? At Schwab Charitable. Yeah, so what we, what we, the Joe Doe, John Doe Charitable Fund is what we call the fund name. And, and yes, um, if the, the user can decide whether they want to share that information or not, but if they do, which is the default option, then it do, that the information does come with, with a donation.
And I see that Topher says, we manage a symbolic adoption program through Shopify. Is there the possibility of an integration to Shopify in the future? I can take that. Yeah, I can take that. Um, great question. Um, we're continuing to add more and more integrations to make it as easy as possible for nonprofits to add that way to their forms. So things like Wix, Squarespace, Shopify is an interesting one. The only thing to be aware of is that a donor cannot receive any benefit from a DAF donation. So if they are checking out and getting anything in return for that donation, DAF A is not allowed to be present on that Shopify website. So Topher, that's something to be aware of. Yeah, I, I think it sounds like it. This in this instance, it's something symbolic, like an adopt a, uh, adopt a plant or a road or, or a star or something along those lines. That's usually fine. Even like the Central Park membership, um, it, it's not actually like that grants you access to the park. Everyone's welcome to the park. That's just how they frame their supporter program. Um, so those are some nuances uh, related to to DAP usage. Salvo mentioned a big one, which is making sure you're not receding with um, a tax receipt, that you want to thank donors for their contribution and acknowledge it, but make sure that it's not a tax receipt because they got the tax write-off when they submitted the, uh, when they contributed to the DAF, but any grant that is leaving the donor advised funds, um, that's just an allocation of those funds and they do not generate an additional um, tax benefit from that. But other examples where people try to use DAFs where they can't, that comes up a lot and are probably good to be aware of, are things like galas or events where you buy tickets or tables. Um, those are really strict that the DAF provider will not approve um, those requests if folks try to use a DAF for that specific purpose. Auction items are definitely a no. Um, so good things to, to be mindful of when you're getting into DAF fundraising. Any other questions from folks? I guess, Sal, I have a question for you as we've seen a couple of these um, implementations in, in Luminate specifically. Do you have any um, advice for a team that wants to do it? And they're like, what are, uh, what are lessons learned from doing other folks that have done these implementations, things that they should be aware of, how to, what's in their control to make that as seamless as possible? Yeah, happy to answer that. And I, I showed a Luminate Online um, example, but this works really well also on Team Razor. Uh, remember, peer to peer, people want to feel like they contributed to a goal where there's a thermometer that moves up. And for the first time ever, you can participate using your donor advice fund very easily on these pages. So I want to make sure that that's an ability too. Something to, in terms of implementation, right? How data flows is always going to be a little bit uh, custom because Team Razor APIs and Luminate Online APIs are a little bit different uh, from each other and can support different um, mappings. Um, but what you really want to look out for is, is from a user's perspective, again, putting it as an express really allows uh, for the fat highest conversion rates uh, from your donors. Um, and then if there's any pieces of data that are required, uh, maybe like tributary information that don't pass through really well to Luminate Online, there's ways to accommodate that using like metadata objects. And we just have to uh, work through uh, how we extrapolate the data from those metadata objects. Our team is really good and experienced at doing that. We've done it for some of the largest Luminate Online and Twin Razor forms. So if you reach out to us, um, we're happy to help and make sure the integration is, is seamless. Um, and you can get up and running quickly. One thing that came to mind too as Sala was talking and, and brought up the Team Razor example, um, I, I also think it's really important that, and all of you are in a good position for this, is making sure that you are putting, once you have access to DAF Pay, that you are using it in all the places where you could be receiving gifts. And so what I mean by that is a lot of times people might have a specific standalone form for a mailing campaign they do 
or they have a ways to give page where they talk about donor advised funds or they have a team raiser event page in their main donate form having a good sense for all of the instances where DAFA could be leveraged and making sure that you are utilizing it there once you have access. Um, we have just found that sometimes people will have to follow up and remind organizations like, hey, you actually haven't put it in all the places that you could be getting gifts in. Um, so I think an upfront audit of all those different options to make sure you're getting it everywhere that you could be getting those gifts is really important. All right. Any other questions from folks? It can also just be about donor advised funds in general. Not, it's not so specific to to Daft Pay and Luminate Online. We're happy to to share any any uh, any insights we can. A couple of things on our end, just to keep an, an eye out for. We are working on a benchmark study looking at nonprofit experience with donor advised funds. Um, and looking at historical data on DAF giving and as it compares to non-DAF giving across 20 of the largest organizations in the country. Um, that includes actually American Cancer Society as a part of that report. And we'll be releasing that in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, it will contain really groundbreaking insights that we've never had before looking cross organizationally on their experience with receiving DAF funds, including things like how much more money do DAF donors give collectively than non-DAF donors? How many more? How much more often do they give? What's their retention like by comparison? And even something like what what happens once a donor once gave with a credit card and then in the future starts giving with a DAF? It actually has a profound impact on their support of that one organization in addition to their overall philanthropy. And yes, Topher, that is we're working on that with K2D. Uh, I'm glad that you, glad that you're familiar with them. We work very closely with that team. I'll add one one last piece here. Um, I think it's I think sometimes people miss how unique it is um, by just one integration, right? Like adding one new payment option to your form, you now have access to 234 billion dollars that have to go to charity, um, and your organization can now receive it a lot more easier and as a benefit to that, you start to steward relationships with high intent, intentional donors. Um, it's very unique, uh, and I want pe I want I always like to re reemphasize that uniqueness and importance uh, that is now available in the philanthropic uh, charity industry. Um, and we're very excited. We're very excited to work with nonprofits to support your missions and all the work you do day to day, um, and make it easier for donors to support you as well. Great points. Yeah, we're really excited to be working with you all. We're excited to be working with Lizzie and the and the Blackbod team. So a lot of good stuff to come. I'm glad that you could host us today. Uh, me too. Um, I want to thank everyone who attended. Um, this was such a great session. Thank you, Salo and Mitch. Um, I feel like I learned something every time I talk to you guys, um, which is pretty often. Um, so I just I love this innovative way of you know, getting people to access other funds um, and making it so easy to donate to the great organizations that we work with. So thank you to our speakers, our attendees. I did just launch that survey. If everyone could take 10 seconds to please take it. Um, and we look forward to seeing hopefully all, most of you in Seattle in September, um, as well as in the remaining sessions this afternoon and at our closing main stage at 4.30. Um, I do encourage everyone to click that link I put in the chat to find chariots listing in the Blackboard marketplace, go ahead and hit that connect button or the contact button if you want to reach out to their team and get more information. Thank you so much, everyone. We will see you in the next session. Thanks, all. Thanks, Lizzie.